He won the Thoroughbred Show Horse and Supreme Champion Novice Show Horse. And I was like, oh wow, yay. Now, I knew he was nice. I knew he was nice. <laughs> so it did make me feel good, yeah. Is it a moment that's going to stay with you? I think probably, because it was something that was so unexpected for such a novice horse. The good-looking son of Willow Magic, Bim Bam Buddy, had run his last race only five months before. In showing, the judge doesn't know how long the horse has been there for. The judge just sees a horse in the arena and they judge what they see. So if he puts a foot wrong, he's kind of out. And he just didn't put a foot wrong. I had watched this horse from his first race. And I wanted him because he had this beautiful head. And then I watched him go down to the start and I thought, hmm, that moves nicely. I like that. I'd had him, what, four months or so and the show came up. But I thought, do I? It's going to be at the Royal Showgrounds. It can be not a very inviting environment for a horse's first show because of the grandstands. And, and for showing, generally you have to have a horse that behaves perfectly. And he was just phenomenal. I mean, he got into that arena and he did not put a foot wrong. Well-known and respected equestrian Jill Liddermore has spent her life working with horses and in particular thoroughbreds. Whilst it's also her passion, Jill nonetheless plays a valuable role in starting retired racehorses in their second careers for other riders to then take on. We paid Jill a visit at her beautiful stables in Seven Oaks near Greytown. I am an avid racing watcher. <laughs> I watch all the race meetings and I kind of track what I want. I watch its temperament when it's going down to the start. I watch it in the ring and I think, okay, that's, that's one I'd like to work with. I would get it here and I just do very little with it in the beginning. Feed it really well, protect it from the flies, bring it in a little earlier and then just start working with them. I generally ride it within the first or second day. I hop on it quickly just to get a feel of where he is with himself. Because obviously when you get them off the track, they need a bit of rest time. Some yeah. of them need less, some of them need more. Give them physio, chiro, and yeah, that's how I start them. What lucky horses. Hi. Our trip <laughs> coincided with a special visit from Jill's daughter, Claire, who had flown up from Cape Town for a few days to help with the horses and a show coming up on the weekend. With both Jill and Claire sharing a passion for horses, the bond between them is special. There was lots to celebrate as it was also Andre's birthday with delicious cake for tea. Bunny was the welcome party, whilst we all took a moment to catch up and chat. I love growing up in a horsey environment. It was a, just a major part of my childhood and part of our connection. She rode in her first little show when she was like on her own as a five-year-old and she was amazing. Claire can get on anything and she can ride it because she's had such vast experience with riding horses as a youngster. Horses was our life and what we still share today. And Jill still takes the yeah. opportunity to put her up on those recently retired racehorses undergoing retraining. With three or four thoroughbreds in the yard at any one time, there are always horses for Claire to ride. So what is it that makes working with thoroughbreds so rewarding? They are quick to learn. I love to see them when they start going nicely and they know what I want from them. I couldn't help but lend a hand myself. Working hard. She loves the sports, eh? <laughs> They're athletic. Temperament-wise too, you can't really beat it. Once they've had their time out and they're settling, you've taken them to a place or two and you've worked them on the ground, you can't really beat them for versatility. They're incredible that way. They most certainly are, even when used in movies, as Jill explains. So in 1984, the year I matriculated, I got asked by the producers of Shaka Zulu to ask me if I would go along with the film crew and be in charge of the horses and would I double for Edward Fox because they were using my beautiful dapple grey mare, a thoroughbred called Taipei by Gigantic. So I just donned Edward Fox's second outfit and I did all his double work. I taught the main actor of Shaka Zulu, Henrik Dele, 
I gave him riding lessons because he needed to ride in the movie and part of that was teaching him. Yeah, and it was the most amazing experience. I think it was probably nine months of my life. It was something that I absolutely loved. And Jill must have made an impression, receiving flowers and a thank you from writer and producer Bull Foray. Many years after Jill's foray into film, Claire has found herself as a singer-songwriter and sound mixer in the same industry. I studied sound production. I wanted to learn how to produce music. I started getting more into making my own music, writing my own music. I realized I can sing and I've loved it. Sitting in this quiet room Just a little too much time to think it through It's what I love to do, but it doesn't always pay the bills. But in the other thing that I do, I'm also in the film industry. I'm a sound mixer. Claire's worked on the likes of Homeland, Beast, Black Mirror, Call the Midwife, and Mission Impossible when on location in Hootsprate, meeting Tom Cruise himself. He sort of looked at me and he did like this. <laughs> like, the, like literally you see him do it in the, in the magazines. So, and I was like, hey Tom. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> it's an interesting world to be yes. in. <laughs> yeah, no, she's incredible. But she doesn't come home that often. I mean, she has her own life. She's a grown up, you know, that's what they do. <laughs> But Jill is kept busy with her beautiful thoroughbreds, retraining and placing between 8 and 10 each year. And I don't do it on a big scale because then it wouldn't be fun for me. It wouldn't be fun for me to get a horse in here and just send it off immediately. That's not fun. I like to work with it. I like to play with it. I like to enjoy them. I mean, I am careful when I sell a horse to somebody. Many have had the good fortune of passing through Jill's hands and benefiting from her knowledge and training it gives them a head start in their second careers. Once they've had proper schooling, they never really look back. When offered a ride on Jack of Hearts, a broad smile jumped to my face. Borrowing Claire's helmet and a quick leg up, off we went. Any apprehension I had, having not ridden for many years, simply vanished as Jill's careful handling and training of Jack showed. It was a wonderful feeling. <laughs> I'm very pleased she's finally reaching a point where she's being recognized yeah. in the way that I think she deserves and seeing her worth and acknowledging it and it, it's evident in, in the horse. I'm really proud of her and, and I think she's doing an amazing job. I've learned so much over the years with all the various different horses that I've, yeah. I've had to go out into the paddocks and see these beautiful horses. Okay, they cost me a lot to keep. <laughs> I know that. But um, they are just beautiful. When you see a nice thoroughbred, yeah. how does it make you feel? Oh, I get so excited. It's ridiculous. It is just ridiculous. <laughs> And what of that show which prompted Claire's visit? It was another success with Jill and Bim Bam Buddy returning home with two first place rosettes. Oh, gorgeous hey. thing, hey? Yes. She's just beautiful, aren't you? 